I'll just see. And this, as you might imagine, was custom made for me for this home. So I could prepare my food. Yeah. So this was all, this yeah. was uh, this was custom made. This was custom made. I have some pots and pans in here, and I have utensils in here. Wow. Perfect. And uh, yeah, so when I when actually when I'm gonna cook, I take I have to step up and look my thing from Ireland. Here. Oh, from Ireland. Yes. Nice. It's, a, the, it's called the click. It's the clatter. Yeah, the yeah. clatter. And um, so I have to use the stool to get up to get into my fridge. Right. And then I can get whatever I'm gonna make. Right. And then I put it out here, and I can prepare everything. And then when I go to wash or cook. I just can stand up here and cook away. Excellent. Yes, and then as you notice, there aren't any plates or dishes. And when people come to my house, they'll often be like, "Oh, where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the thing?" I'm like, "Hello, whose house are you in?" <laughs> Mindfulness. Peggy O'Neill. It's so wonderful to see you again. Yeah. We met each other a few months ago, and I really, really was excited to do this interview today. You are an award-winning motivational speaker. So before we get into everything, I want to know Peggy O'Neill. I mean, it doesn't get more Irish than that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think that's actually what set the whole thing off is that you asked me my name and I heard your accent and I said, well, as a matter of fact, I happen to be Irish. That's, that's exactly it. Yeah, yes. that was it. Yes. So what is the Irish? Uh, background. Tell me all about that. My great grandfather immigrated to Cleveland, Ohio, when he was only 19 years old, and um, now our clan is about 306 strong. Now that's fascinating. How did you how did you get all this information? There's a book. Oh, oh my <laughs> yeah, god! Yeah, I actually have it right here. I was just looking at it. It's called The Red Hand Forever. Um, my my cousin's husband, Christopher Ivan, did a lot of research, and right. um, really, this is really about um, Hugh M. O'Neill, um, his about him, his coming, about his ancestry, his coming to Cleveland, and the um, the life that he had, and the family, and the business that grew out of it. Right, right. Yeah. So that's how I learned about it. Yeah, because there's a lot about it at the moment where people are looking at their ancestors. There's programs about it and And, and people all these are getting their blood tested they to find are. out what percentage they are. They are. Yes. So you have you been to Ireland? I actually have, but I'm sorry to say that I only have been there once. Aww. I am uh, excited to go back, but I was there in 2013. And no, actually 2014, I was there in the spring and I went to take a class and I did a tour of a hike and bike tour of the Ring of Kerry. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Oh, you got the best. Yeah. So what was it like in Ireland for you? I loved Ireland. Well, it was April, so yeah, perfect. everything was green and the little baby lambs were everywhere. And I got the, the lamb's wool hat with the little sheep <laughs> knitted on it. Yeah. <laughs> And <laughs> did you drink Guinness? I drank Yay. Guinness every night, even though I don't even every drink. Every night, oh, I love I don't it. Drink. Well, I went to the pub every night to hear music. Right. So the thing that was great, I went with this incredible tour guide named David O'Connor, who has Wolfhound Tours, right. if I'm allowed to say that. I'm and, sure. <laughs> and he is the most amazing human being, uh, just totally beautiful heart type of person, and Irish through and through, and he customized you know, the other guys would bike 10 miles and I'd bike three miles. And right. the other guys would hike five miles and I'd hike two miles. And um, the funniest thing that he said to me, I we went to a moss covered forest for a hike. And I came back and I said, I sat down for a while to have a rest and no one was around and I got up to take a pee. And of course, some people came by and he said, I bet they were surprised to see a wee taking a wee. <laughs> Perfect. Oh my god. I'll never forget that. Oh, that's so perfect. I loved um, the nature and we saw so many beautiful streams and hikes and mountains and the music every single night and the food yeah, every course. single evening and oh, it was just wonderful. Wonderful. I can't wait to go back. You are a motivational speaker. Um, where do you uh, talk? Where do you speak? Everywhere. Now our inner size is that part of us that is unseen but all important like the roots of a tree. We can't see them, but we know the deeper they grow, the bigger the storm it can weather. 
I speak in uh, elementary schools mm -hmm. a lot, right. and I speak in corporations. Mm -hmm. I speak at women's conferences and teen leadership conferences. Okay. Yes. So the school, the school uh, um, speaking that you do, um, that's about bullying, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Anti-bullying. Anti-bullying. Yes, and yeah. building self-esteem. Right. Because for me, it's together. You can't do one without the other. If you don't have good self-esteem, you're going to bully. Right. That's where bullying comes from. And like that, the bigger we are on the inside, the more capable, confident, resilient, and loving we become. And that, I'm trying to sustain as an older person, as an adult, mm. I learned that it was challenging for me to sustain a sense of self-esteem, a sense of I'm okay, mm -hmm. a sense of I'm a part of this. When every, not everyone, when a lot of energy was coming at me with a message that something's wrong with you, mm -hmm. you're not okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, I mean, it's, it's, it's so. very hard. It's, it, yeah. Children can be horrendous to each other. Yes, you they know, can growing be. Growing up like that. Yeah. And then, and then so, so what did you, how did you, how did you cope with that? What did you, did you, did you Well, there was a whole other or? chapter in high school that mm -hmm. I didn't mention. Okay. High school was a whole other chapter. Uh, nobody really told me that the dating situation was going to be different for me. And so I anticipated, oh, I'm going to be going to the dance and to the prom and to the mm -hmm, just like everybody else. Yeah. And I didn't. And I, I, it's not like I didn't have friends. I had friends. I had male friends. I had girlfriends. However, that particular dating situation mm -hmm. was not part of my life. One of the great things is my mother did a lot of wonderful things for me, and one of them was that she got me involved in competitive ice skating. Mm. Um, wow. Yeah, so I started ice skating when I was six, and I took to it like water in a duck. Oh my and God. Um, when I was nine, they joined a club so that I could skate every day, and I got a coach that became my surrogate father. He was just the love of my life, Peter Collin. Uh, to this day, I uh, my head to the floor to him for how much, um, how much he encouraged me to know that anything I could do, I could do with enough with enough hard work. That there were no obstacles for me whatsoever, except between here and here. Mm. I mean, the power the power that a teacher has yes. over their students it is extraordinary. Yes, That's a perfect example. So of it. that was an extraordinary gift mm. that both my mother and he gave me. Mm -hmm. And then during high school, I just sort of because that other scene wasn't happening for me, I just sort of naturally dove even deeper into my skating. Mm -hmm. I skated mm -hmm. before school, after school, on the weekends, and I had uh, one of my best girlfriends who was five foot ten and gorgeous, mm -hmm. Alison Ford, like another love of my life, wonderful <laughs> person who I'm still close with. Yeah. She and I just palled around all the time, and I didn't seem to miss it too much, although there was an internal there was an internal wound that was like, mm. I want to be part of that thrilling thing. Everybody comes yeah. in on Monday morning and is all bubbly and there's effervescence energy going around and I wanted to be part of that and I knew my heart hurt that, right. I, that I had to miss out on that. Now can I ask you, um, are your parents also little people? Oh, well that is an excellent question. Mm -hmm. Most people assume that they are and mm. they are not. Right. So. Um, my parents are of average size, and that's the case with about probably 90 or 95 percent of little people. Really? Yes. That's really interesting. Yes. So just like they have dwarfed trees and yeah. dwarfed bushes and dwarfed dogs, they have, it, there's some gene that... I was going to say, was it in something in the genes? It's in the genes. It's yeah. a, a genetic, their blueprint for the bone length shifts. Right. And um, so the person grow, is smaller. Mm-hmm. The intelligence, lifespan, usually the same. Now, most little people, there's a whole thing I can do about little people. Well, I mean, I'm fascinated because, I, I mean, I, I think it's really interesting. I'd, I'd really like to talk about it, if you wouldn't mind, just a little bit more. Sure, no. Um, your, your brothers and sisters, do you have brothers and I sisters? Ha I do. I have a brother who's eight years older, sister who's seven years older, mm -hmm. and a sister who's three years older. My sisters are average size. Mm -hmm. My brother also is short stature. The same as yourself? Same as me. Gotcha. Wow. Mm -hmm. He's wow. had a very different, he took a very different path with it. 
Okay. I mean, our lives have been very different. Right. Yeah. You're not going to tell me about that. I can. Yeah. He, uh, well, he's sober now, but for okay. long, oh, many, many years, okay. he used alcohol as a way to find his way through the difficulty. And I was introduced to meditation as a teenager, yeah. and I went on the alternative Different healing path. An yeah. alternative healing path, yeah. meditation, breathing, eating, all of that. Right, right. Yes. And I know you're a fabulously healthy eater, and I'm, oh, I brought you tea. chocolate biscuits. Let's have oh, some let's tea. Oh, let's have some tea. I totally <laughs> forgot about it. Oh, this is hot. Oh, yeah. Let me put Do my sleeve here. Okay. You want to do it? Okay, thank you. Yay. Lovely Irish tea. Irish tea for two Irish ladies. Oh. oh, thank you so much. Yeah, and how about some sugar? Or milk? I'm actually going to have no sugar and no milk, so okay, I'm just great. going to take it like that. Let's do All right, it. and please help yourself too. Thank you very much. A very well, they, they looked really nice there. <laughs> they do. They do. Like, it's almost like. Well, as they say in Ireland, oh. they don't usually clink teacups, delicate teacups, but as they say in Ireland, slauncha. <laughs> slauncha? Slauncha? Slauncha, yeah, slauncha. It's usually with a pint of Guinness. <laughs> A bit of Ireland, right a in a cup. A bit of Ireland in a cup. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you were, were, were people nice to you over there? Very. You, you, know, you didn't have very. any mishaps over there. Not really. Hopefully. Good, good, no. good. I'm glad you did. I can't you remember it. any. So, good. if I did, they were Perfect. very slight. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. People were really polite to me and very sweet. Good. I'm glad. I'm. I'm. Mm -hmm. I'm very glad about that. Um. Now, so, so, you went down. Uh, uh, um, 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 medit meditative, meditative route. Yes. And you, how how did you start? You, you told me you did that when you were a teenager. You started getting into that. And then how did, did you start making a living out of it? Oh, I changed careers many times. Mm -hmm. uh, figuring out what I sort of wanted to do and my purpose and all of that took a couple decades. Mm -hmm. Two books so far. And a children's book. Yes. So what? Tell me a little bit about that. Yes. So Little Square Head is my children's book. Right. And. It is a big, colorful uh, hardback. Uh, I call it a Cadillac book. It's mm -hmm. very classy, right. and it has colorful illustration. And it's about a girl named Rosa who has a square head. Right. And Rosa gets teased because she has oh, a square head. Okay. And she's in the uh, woods. She's she likes to go into the woods because nobody gives her a hard time there. And she's there one day, and she's crying, saying to herself, "I'll never have any friends." And the stream next to her is magical, and the water speaks to her and says, come and look at your reflection. And when she does, she sees a huge diamond in her heart. Oh, wow. And she says, what's that? And the water speaks to her and says, that's who you really are. And if you keep seeing yourself in this way, you'll get three gifts. So each day she comes, she goes out and she experiences life, and she receives a gift. And the gifts are courage, confidence, and compassion. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, and at the end, um, she's reminded that she has everything that she needs oh, inside of her own heart. I don't mean to. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> a bit emotional. <laughs> it's supposed to be. Yeah, um, I mean, that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. So, and the story is to let every. It's, I chose the girl to have a square heart. Right. Because I mean, a square head. A square head. Because right. it could be big earlobes. It could be acne. It could be a large breasts. It could be. Um, shortness, it could be ob obesity, it mm. could be skinniness, any problem. Mm. But when the girl has a square head, everybody can go, oh, well, nobody has a square head, so everybody can relate to that sure. person. Yes. So, and then the also other universal principle is that we all have a diamond in our heart. Mm. We all have a beautiful essence. And this is one of the main things that um, the gifts that's come out of my life challenge as a little person mm. is to know that Underneath this outer shell, there is a person of greatness mm -hmm. that has qualities of greatness like compassion and courage and love and kindness and power. And that if you can find a way to access that inner self, that you can bring those qualities in your life mm -hmm. and have a stellar life. And no matter if you can change your, you know, everyone has challenges. Some of them, like money and even health sometimes, we can change those challenges. In my situation, I couldn't change my challenge. I had to say, okay, this is never going to change. What can I do that can change? And that was a big, 
big aha moment for me when I recognized that I had a fantasy that one day I was gonna wake up as a five foot six, gorgeous, beautiful woman like yourself, oh, and all of my problems would be gone, and that it would be, my batting average would be much better <laughs> if I actually <laughs> chose to think about how could I change my attitude, yeah. my identity, uh, how I express myself, how I receive, uh, how I, what, what, what voices I let go in my head, all of those things mm -hmm. that I could change. And once I started putting my attention on changing the things that I could change, my life transformed from being in a downward spiral where I was suicidal in my mid-30s to spiraling up to now where I feel like I'm flying and uh, full of love and joy oh most gosh. of the time. I mean, there's still hard days, but most well, of the time. Give me a big hug. <laughs> oh. uh, thank thank you. you so much for this interview. You're thank welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so, oh, I'm so honored. I'm so honored. Thank you. You're welcome. Each and every one of you can dream big dreams. Do incredible things and be powerful and compassionate. Leaders, you all can walk tall.